Lord is destroying you know, Christians, killing Christians. Right. You know, and, and uh, like you was talking about, it would be a hard thing for somebody to come to each one of us. And I, I used to say this years ago. If somebody put a gun to your head and tell you either you denounce Christ or they're going to shoot you, what would you do? That'd be something you, the only way you could do is through the Spirit of God. Right. There's no way without God's Spirit living in you. You know, and, and you know, I remember the story of the time the uh, old guy, uh, I think he was from Russia, and he went into the underground church. And you know, they all had guns and everything because they used to have a church underground in Russia. And they went over there and knocked on the door and said, you know, and said, we hear that this is the church, you know, of, of, of the living God, of, of Jesus Christ. We want to know if this is it. There's all kinds of left, all kinds of people left. There's like a handful there, left there, you know, four or five people. They said, yes, that's who we are. They said, good, that's who we want to worship with. It's those that are true. Yeah. You know, and you think about that. Now, how, in all honesty, how many churches around here is like that? Yeah. You know, I mean, Christ himself said the wheat and the tares will grow together. You know, and it, it comes down to, to God's Holy Spirit being enabling you. You know, I think the scripture says, don't think about what you're going to say in that hour because you're not going to, it's not going to be you. It's going to be my spirit speaking through you. You know, and that's, that's the only way that we can do that. Amen? Yeah. Amen. He said, for I wish myself were accursed. You know, that word accursed is the same word that's used in Galatians where it says, even if an angel preaches any other gospel than what I've preached, let him be accursed. That means completely cut off from Christ is what that means. He says, uh, if he was accursed for Christ and my brother and my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Uh, this, this here, I, I believe if you go back to chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, where he, uh, Paul says, what, what profit is it to be a Jew? That was a question that was, that was asked in chapter 3, and I believe this is a continuation all the time before, he, he was dealing with something totally different about righteousness and, and uh, you know about uh, about grace and everything. But I think here he's coming back. What does it benefit the Jew? What what profit is it of the Jewish people? He says, "Who are Israelites? To whom pertain the adoption and the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises?" You know, I think this is what he's talking about. This is what profits the Jews have. You know, they they don't give the adoption. Remember there in chapter eight, he talks about you know they, that we're given the spirit of adoption. You know, they, they were given that adoption. They, they were God's chosen people. And uh, the glory. You know, they, they witnessed the Shekinah glory of God. Now, what kind of people would want to do that? You know, I think what we got to realize is what the argument is, is talking about here. What The transition, I told Pastor Jake, I said, you gave me one of the hardest chapters in the book of Romans to teach. Because it's a transition period from, from, from God talking about being righteous through Christ and the blood of God, going back to dealing with Israel. You know, and that, that, this is a transition part where Paul is trying to bring them back to, to chapter 3 where he said, you know, what does it profit a Jew? I mean, they, they saw the Shekinah glory of God. These were, were Jews. You think, you think they would automatically just become Christians. But what you've got to realize, you know, I, I've studied about this and thought about this. These are people that's 40, 50, 60 years old, whatever how old they are, but they've lived in Judaism their whole life. Yeah. And for some of you know, we look down on them all the time. Why didn't they receive you? Well, I mean, you know, you were raised in Baptist your whole life. Why would you turn into a Pentecostal? I mean, it's basically the same thing. I mean, it really is. You know, they, they know what they've been taught. They know what the law has commanded them and, and what they are supposed to do and, and what they're not supposed to do. Right. And that they have seen the Shekinah glory. They've seen everything. So that's their way of life. Why do I want to change? You know, it goes all the way through. Uh, Pastor Thomas, just like uh, we was talking there in uh, Acts chapter 15, where they was telling them, you know, these were Jews that, that lived by the law. They knew the law, but in chapter 15 of Acts, they said, you know, you have to keep the commandment of uh, Moses and be circumcised to be saved. Then, you know, then they had the big council and everything. They said, we gave no such commandment. But a person's way of life that's lived that way their whole life, it would be hard for them to be converted over to the Christian life. You know, it really is. Even, even Paul, I believe it's in Acts like 23 or something like that. He still calls himself a Jew. You know, and, and, and plus a Christian. But you know, they, they see the Shekinah kind of glory of God. I don't know about you, but I'd love to see the Shekinah kind of glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Right. But you know, what's amazing is that Shekinah kind of glory of God would, would come up in the temple, would, would come up on, on the mercy seat, and you know, we, we as Christians, we should have the Shekinah kind of glory of God in our life all the time. Right. You know, that's, that's why the Scripture says we have better promises and better covenant. Amen. Right. It talks about that. There talks about there. They've even given the covenants. You know, we, we always think of the covenants. You know, the covenants that God made. We think of the uh, of the covenant that He gave Noah, which is the rainbow sign, the, the covenant of circumcision. Let me ask you a question. How many of you ever heard of the salt covenant? 
It's in the Bible. Yeah. I, I was telling Jamie, I worked with Jamie Joe back here, and he was talking about that here a while back. Most people's never heard of it. And it's an everlasting covenant to the children of Israel throughout all generations, but nobody ever heard of it. I can be the silent. <laughs> See what a salt covenant is. It's in Scripture. It's in the Scripture. But, so I'll say, there's a lot of the covenants and, and things that, that, that we as Christians truly don't understand. Until you really start digging in God's Word and, and understanding. You know, what, what we try to do, and I've said this for years, is we've tried to take Judaism into Christianity and make it a barrier. You know what I'm saying? Because in, in all honesty, we really don't know a whole lot about Jewish history. Just, you know, what we can pick up here and there. And, and, and it's our responsibility to understand because without us understanding exactly what God was telling the children of Israel, it's hard for us to understand what kind of promises, what kind of covenant that we're in now. You know, when it speaks of better promises and better covenants, you know, that sounds great, but what, what is he literally talking about? You know, and, and for us to really understand that, we need to search in the Scriptures and find out exactly what kind of covenant he makes, just like a salt covenant. It is a prominent covenant. It is a very powerful covenant, and most people never heard of it. Well, you, know, you think about this for a minute, and I'll use just a little, little taste of it. I mean, what's salt good for? Seed. Preserve. Right. Well, but I'll, I'll tell you what the salt covenant was. Salt covenant, you've heard of the meat offering. Okay, they was to put salt on that meat offering every offering every time they offered it to God to preserve it to make it pure. Mm -hmm. That's what the salt kept forever throughout all generations. It's found in three places in Scripture, and it tells you about what that is, about what the salt covenant is. But you know, like I say, you know, they, they were given the law. You know, what I mean, what what kind of people? You know, it, it, like I say, it'd be hard to get away from that when you know that your ancestors actually God spoke to Moses. God gave him that cause. Yeah, and, and you're trying to tell me to get away from that? I know what Grandma and Grandpa done. Come on, I mean, I, I, I try to look at it through the eyes of, of other people, how, how they lived their life. You know, they, they lived this. You know, they tried to the very best of their ability to obey God's law. Yes, you think was going to the synagogue every Sunday or whenever and hear that talk, you think if they would pick up that they would come to better way, if they would come to the future, they would come to the future, they would come to the future. You think they would pick up on it? Well, how many people ain't picked up on Jesus died for them, Jesus loved them? No. We've got a point there. I mean, they really. But I want to add something back to that when, uh, when uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to you, uh, you say that you have to have the Holy Spirit or somebody put a gun in your head. Probably when the Holy Spirit would speak to you and say, Yeah, I'm preaching to fight uh, for an instance, God gives the word of knowledge. Just so you came in church uh, one morning and uh, her husband was hard to and, and right off, the Holy Spirit just said, uh, Tell her her husband's going to be saved. God's going to be saved. And I thought, Why did I say that? I said, Why did I say that? I said, Why did I say that? 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 Why that's probably that's probably when you say, Yeah, I love you saying what the name said. Well, why did I say that? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, carnally, carnally in the flesh will be saying, What in the world does it mean? In the spirit you will say it and then wonder why you know it's God right there. It's it's all about the spirit of God. Well, like I said, you know that the the law, the services of God, they were actually given exactly what to do in the temple. The services to God. Yeah. You know, and like I say, they have, have lived this and lived this and lived this. And, you know, and, and we as, as Gentiles kind of look down on it. Like, you know, well, he came to his own jump and see if not, you know. Well, Lord, didn't they, didn't they witness? Why didn't they know he was there? Jesus himself said they didn't even know the time of the visitation. Yeah. They didn't even know when that was, you know, that I was here. I was the one that they've been praying for forever. That's right. You know, and, and the funny thing that always that always gets me is here they was doing temple services, but God wasn't even in there. Yeah, you know, I'm off one of the, I mean, the, the Ark of the Covenant wasn't even in there. They're still full of people. You know, they, that, that's what's amazing to me. And, and people's full today. That's right. I mean, how many times have you heard uh, people say that, you know, if God, uh, Holy Ghost show up, some of these churches kill people dead? You know, that, and that's the truth. I mean, yeah. I, I've been in churches where it's just dead as a door now. Well, we wouldn't recognize people wearing red hat on Sunday morning. That's the truth. That's the truth. You know, that, uh, you know people, people are. are how about this? They're, they're a product of their environment. Yeah. That's really what they are. 
you know, that's why you know, this this group believes this way, this group believes this way, this group believes this way, that's what you hear. You hear something, what is it, seven times, you start believing. Uh, 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 that's the truth. And, and you know, not, not to be little nobody or nothing, but, but most people, you know, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, I'll give you an illustration. Most people, they don't pick up the Bible to study for themselves. I mean, I, I'm being honest. That's right. Now, I'll give you a good illustration. I asked it, probably, I, 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 I preached a message probably 10 years ago, and it was searching first the kingdom of God. So I went and asked all kinds of people, what's that mean, searching first the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? You mean you're commanded to seek something first and you don't even know what it is? <laughs> oh, you wouldn't believe the people, some of the responses I got. You know, and, and that's what the Lord tells us seek you first, the kingdom of God. Yeah. And people, most people don't even know what the kingdom of God is. Why? Because they, they know what they've said in the pew, they know what they've been taught, and, you know, instead of picking it up. And that's, that's why it's so important for us, just like this here. I mean, I, I'm not saying I know that. You know what I'm saying? But, but I'm learning just like you are. I, I love getting in God's Word to find a new thing, find a new revelations. I mean, it's, it, it's awesome. You know, and, uh, you know being able, being able uh, for God to, to literally give you the services of the temple, to give you the law, to give you, make covenants with you. Did somebody want to change that? Paul said, man, I'd I, I better just, just give it all up and let it be saved. I mean, that's a heart. I, I, can't, get, I can't get away from that. Because that, that, that really... That really stirs me in my heart. And, and what's amazing is, is, is the Jewish people, they chose darkness rather than light. You know, they, they'd rather stay, they'd rather stay right where they are, trying to obey. And, and you know, I think what it boils down to is too easy. Yeah. It's too easy. That's right. You know, I've, I've heard it, and I'm sure a lot of y'all heard the message of grace is too easy. Well, no. It's too easy. I don't. And that's what Jesus said. Everything that pertains to all, all this, all this services, all the covenants, Jesus said it's finished. I, I've, I've done it all. Amen. Right. And, and, and the very Messiah they was praying for, they didn't even recognize. That's right. That's right. You know, and that's 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 hard to understand. You know, but, but I'm looking at it as a Gentile, which we had to. Know. You know, that's that's what a lot of people can't can't understand too. Is how you know, we we went through this and. and uh, Book of Romans and then uh, Galatians and everything else I talk about that the Gentiles were we had the law. You know, we were we were just out there wandering around playing a bunch of dogs, what scripture says. Yeah. Amen. Right. We're from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says, Who of the fathers of the heart of whom as concerning the flesh is verse five, Christ came, who is over all God be, be blessed forever, amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. You know, <clears throat> Did God's word fail? Of course not. You, know, you, you think about why in the world they didn't get saved. It's like, you know, what failed? What happened? Look at verse 9 6. It says, Not as the word of God had none effect, but they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Now that, that's kind of confusing to a lot of people. Not everybody of Israel is from Israel. Let's read on. And verse 7 says, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh are not of the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Now what's he talking about here? You remember Abraham, how the promise was given him. Isaac and Ishmael, exactly. Isaac was the child of promise. Ishmael was the, was the child of, of the, of the bond woman. Of the slave woman, what Galatians says, I believe chapter 3. What happened, and, and that's why it says not all the seed is of the promise. Because, see, in both of us out of it was Abraham's seed. But only the seed of promise, which was Isaac, which we know later on that he had a son named Jacob, where the 12, he had 12 sons, which is the 12 tribes of Israel. So, so what he's saying here, you know, and, and, and we, we've talked about this earlier, about how you. Uh, you know, the, the seed of the promise. How God God chooses, and, and it, this is hard for me to understand. But you, you read it all down through here, and it, it talks about how basically God chooses who He's going to have mercy on, who He's not, He's not going to have mercy on. We just kind of talking there a little bit. Does that kind of do away with our free will? I mean, if He chooses, you look at Pharaoh. I mean, if you're born again Christian, God's Spirit comes inside you. Know, I'm just throwing this out here. I'm not saying this is what it is. <clears throat> But he says in his word, 
I will have mercy on who I will have mercy, and I will have uh, uh, vengeance or whatever on who I will have vengeance on. So, in a sense, you look at Pharaoh. He talked about the heart and Pharaoh's heart. So, if that was his will, I mean, that, it, it all goes back to those that are the promise and those that are not of the promise. And that, that's why I told Pastor Jake, it's the hardest part in this whole Bible you want me to teach. And I'm no teacher, I'm no Bible scholar. I'm just trying to fill in the gap. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but, you know, you look at this, and, and, and they was talking about Jacob and Esau, where the scripture goes down in there and he talks about Jacob, Jacob have I love, and Esau uh, have I hate. And, you know, they talk about, well, God don't hate nobody. Well, what you've got to realize is Esau is not the person Esau, it is the nation of Edom, is where it is. And actually, the nation of Edom, when the children of Israel come out of Egypt, Edom, the nation, wouldn't let them cross through that land. Right. So, so what they're saying there is Jacob, the, 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 the promise, the seed of the, the promise of the seed where the Messiah's going to come, that all the children, the world children of this world will be blessed. You, you think about this. We, we always look back at Father, Father Abraham as the, the blessing coming through him, but in reality, Jacob, his grandson, is who the seed with, or who the promise was literally fulfilled. It's through the twelve tribes of Egypt, Egypt or Israel. But uh, the, what, we, what we need to realize <coughs> is through, through all of Egypt, or all of Israel, I'm what you said, Egypt. But what we need to realize is even Israel, through that seed, and all through the scripture, you can read it everywhere you go, just about there's always just a remnant. It's not the whole nation. You know, which you get a lot of people that, that's proclaiming the whole nation of Israel will be saved. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that there is a remnant. You know, and it's just like just like even the church, there is a remnant of true, born again, blood bought believers. You know? And uh, that, that's the way it is with, with the children of Israel. You know, there, there is that remnant that, that will be saved. I don't know where I was at. Verse 8. I got a hand myself a little bit there. I'll give you a sign. That's pretty good. There you go. As they which are the children of the flesh, they are not all the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of the promise At this time will I have come, and Sarah will have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born yet, neither having done any good or evil, for the purpose of God according to the election might stand in all of works, but of him that called. See, that right there tells me it's not a matter of, of the will of the person. It's, it's what God's called you. You think about what that just said right there. Not whether they've done good or whether they've done bad, but it was because of the purpose that God put up on their life. And that's everybody in here. You, you know, that, that kind of, we've talked about earlier, does that, does that mean that God has will, power over our own will? I mean, I believe when my will is submitted to Him, He has that power. You know, and, and, you, and you kind of question maybe if if the person is not completely submitted to God, he's rejecting God's will. You know what I'm saying? I mean, literally, what that you look at that one said, it's not a worse, but it's of Him that calls. It's it's Him that's calling. He has called that for that purpose, for that seed, for that remnant, for the Messiah to come, for everything to happen. You know, I don't know if you know God. God's got a plan. <laughs> You know, I mean, he does. And it's, and it's in perfect order. The very way he's designed for it to happen, that's the way it's going to happen. You know, I've heard people say, I was like, well, you can't change the will of God. Well, you can. It's God, not God's will, then you should perish. You can also come and repent. People perish every day. But God's plan, you can't alter God's plan. Right. And this is part of God's plan. It's for this purpose. God, God gave this uh, uh, seed to Abraham. It was this purpose that he would have a uh, nation that would rise up and, and worship him. Amen. Amen. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. You know, I was thinking about this for a minute. Even, even Jacob and Esau, which we've talked about that a little bit ago, it talks about how the, the, the older will serve the younger. Me, me and Jamie was actually talking about this today in, in the office. Could that be a reflection, maybe, of law and grace? The older will serve the younger. I mean, we were held under that schoolmaster. We were shut up under that until grace came. So that older literally serves the younger. 
Because what does it do? That older is what brought us to Christ. It served under the new covenant. I mean, that's a revelation thing. But, you know, it's, it's all through Scripture. Right you know, we get uh, Jacob, Esau, this here. I mean, it's, it's, and, and it's amazing when, when you get a little revelation of grace out. Scripture's just unfolded by grace. It, it is. It's literally amazing. It's amazing. I, I, will, I will share something with you about that. About that. Go ahead. Uh, kind of first year I go real well for what you're teaching uh, Romans 7 and 5. Even so then, that present time also there is a remnant of according to that grace. Remnant. Right. That's the grace. The remnant. There's always that remnant. But what I'm going to share with you is, is everywhere you look, you can always find where God is trying to point us towards grace. Everywhere in the scripture. I, I've studied another day, and I'm just going to throw this out there as a side note. And I've studied on David and Goliath. You know, and and I'm, the, I'm the type of person I always, when something comes up in my mind, it's always like, why is that there? You know, what is the purpose of that? Why is that there? And I've always wondered, in my own little, little infinite mind, why did he get five smooth stones? Why did you say he got five rocks? I mean, you know, and we, we've heard forever that you know, he, had, he had four rocks, right? I challenge you to look at the definition of the root words for smooth, which we know five is the number of grace. Smooth means to remove or replace. I must have rocked the stone. Grace replaced the law. Is that not what we've been taught? It, it's all food scriptures. Yeah, but, but if you start digging, you'll find those revelations. I mean, it's, it's amazing how things just open up. It's a whole new I feel like I've been saved. I really do. I mean, you know, it, 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 well, Pastor Tom, I get stirred sometimes. Amen, brother? But you know, what, what happens is, is, is the scriptures come alive again. You remember when you first got saved? Oh, man, it's just like, whoa, wow, what is this? You know? I remember when I first got saved, man, I was telling everybody. People said, well, I'm saved. What did you tell me? Yeah? I mean, I was, I was excited. Yeah? I mean, you know what I'm talking about, man. I mean, you know, I had a whole summer. You know, you hear people get saved, some people get real saved, I got real saved. Yeah. And I try to get the whole world saved. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's the difference in people's life. I mean, you know, we're much as forgiven. Brother, I'm dead, much as loved. Oh, yeah. Y'all don't know about that, I do. Oh, yeah. I thank God for grace. Yeah. You know, as, as the old saying goes, where would I be if it wasn't for grace? Yeah. I know exactly where I'd be. <laughs> Amen. I know exactly where I'd be. Lord, man, says he failed to serve the young. That's just a side note there. As it's written, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. And we've talked about that earlier. Literally, that's not Jacob, the, the man Jacob, and Esau, the man. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the nation there. The, the nation of the promise and the, and the nation that's of, of the bond uh, woman. Says that. It says, For what shall we say then? Is the unrighteousness with God? God forbid. We know that ain't no unrighteousness with God. Amen. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. There it goes again. That's what I was talking about. Is that really God overpowering us? He knows what you're going to do. I mean, he's all knowing. He knows everything. He knows who did, he knows you're going to get saved. He knows, you know, he knows the battles you're in. He knows what's going on. That he said, I will have compassion on whoever I will have compassion. I mean, that's, that's amazing to me. So that it's not of him that willeth. It's not him that willeth. Nor him that runneth, but of God that shows mercy. Kind of brings a whole new twist to everything, don't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. Because I've always heard, well, you know, you've got your own free will, but you can do whatever you want to. Well, I, I, I don't really see that there. It's not, not him that, that willeth. It's not me. But it's God that showed mercy on me. You know, I, I've said this uh, time and time again. You know, and, and you believe whatever you want to believe. That's fine. I'm not here to argue with nobody. But me, plead the blood of Jesus, turning my back on God, why would I do that? You know, and I, I've heard for years, you know, people, they say, you know, if people do that, they've never really been saved. I can kind of see that. I mean, where, where would I go? Why in the world, just like Paul, where he said, I, I'm willing to give it all away to see him saved. I would do that for nothing in the world. Because I know what lies ahead for me. Why in the world would I want to go back to my old way 
And I believe it goes with this right here because God's will is overpowered my will in my life. So I know where my future is. And I think, I think in, a, in a sense, God knows the future for the, I don't know the sense, I know for sure, God knows the, the future of the children of Israel. He knows exactly the perfect time, the perfect place when they're all going to start coming back in. And that's why, because that's His will. He, he wills that, He knows that for a fact what's going to happen. You know, it has nothing to do with, with us. You know, it's just like, bottom line, I'll, I'll give you a good illustration of a person who gets saved. It's not my will, it was God's Spirit drawn. That was His will. You know, I'm telling you, when I started studying, it's, it's opened up a whole new, whole new realm to me. Because, you know, like I said, I've always, well, I do my own thing, it don't matter. Well, how many times do you do your own thing and the Holy Ghost convince you? That's God's will. Overpower your will. I mean, really, you think about it. That's what that is. That's God's will. Submission to perfection. There you go. There you go. And that's what it is. You know, we say you do your own thing, but if you do your own thing, see what happens. I had a guy one time, he said, God's truth. Pastor of the church. Went through a tough time, divorced, all kinds of stuff. Jamie knows what I'm talking about. Sweet man of God. He, he turned his back, went out there. He said, I'm going to tell you something right now. He said, there was not one thing that I didn't do. And every time I do it, God's word would rise up and be convicted. Yeah, right. What's that called? That's called God's will. Right. Overpowering his will. Say, this ain't who you are. Mark said, I don't want to be. Mm-hmm. And that, that's the purpose of the Spirit. He will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. Holy Ghost is saying, son, this ain't who you are. You know who I've called you to be. It's time for you to stand up and be exactly who I've called you to be. Amen. That's the power of God's will over our own will. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get me started getting preaching. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, that, that's, that's the truth. You know, and I've never really thought about that until I started studying this. But you know, I've always been under the impression that you know, I've got my own free will. I can do whatever I want to. But, you know, then, then Holy Ghost started dealing with me that. I thought, you know, that's not right. You know, if that's the truth, what's grace? God said, I just do whatever you want to. That's not grace. That's not what you're the cause of before you come out into life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> that's true. That's good. But uh, y'all know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Maybe it did to me. For the scripture even saith unto Pharaoh, even for this time, for this same purpose, have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore have he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will harden. That sounds good, like he's got power. I mean, you think of Judas. Bless his heart. But what does scripture say? For this purpose. For this purpose, God put it here. That the scripture might be fulfilled. I mean, I'm sure all the Jews have to do say, Lord, forgive me. But that wasn't his purpose. You know, that, that, that kind of makes you wonder there. Yeah. I mean, it really does. He went out and told himself, God, he was love Jesus. He says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, I went there. He says, Thou will say then unto me, Why do you yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but old man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing form say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me this? And then it goes on and talks about the Father having power over the clay. You know, who are we to say, Well, God, I'm going to do my own thing? That's right. You, know, you saw about that walk up. Well, man, if a, if a person is truly born again Christian, he can't do his own you will do a God. That's it. God will get rid of your thing and give you a new thing. <laughs> Amen. He will. Well, you know, when you, you take for instance, you know, when you first get saved, you know, I mean, everything's totally different. You know, I mean, you know, I, 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 I will stand and testify. You know, back years ago, I mean, I played music all over the place. We had family reunions. The drunker we'd get, the more gospel we'd sing. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, you know, it, it, that knows what I'm talking about. You know, and, and I've always said, you know, I think that's the reason for that, because, you know, your heart truly goes back to where you know you're, where you're supposed to be. You know, God, uh, uh, he, he had power then, I believe, back in that day, because, I mean, I was raised in church. 
You know, my mom bless her heart, she's done for Jesus to happen. She used to say amen. Oh, she can say. She sang in churches in Kentucky and Ohio. How do y'all remember the Sleepy Jeff show? Sonny Jeff, Sleepy Jeff, she you sing on that. I guess I'm all about Yeah, I mean, you don't want to know, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she can sing on that. And she can sing. Anyway. But, but, you know, I mean, it was, it was God's will. You know, and, and some people keep to that will, some people don't. Have not the Father power over the clay with the same one to one, make one best one to honor and another one to dishonor. I mean, you know, that, that goes back what, what he literally is talking here. He's made one children of Israel to honor. And he has made one Esau to dishonor. Because, but why? Because that wasn't a part of the plan. That Abraham got, got ahead of God, which all everybody here knows the story. How he got ahead of God. That's, that's what he declared. It says, what if God willing to show his wrath, to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessel of mercy, which he had before prepared unto glory, even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. All right, there's, there's a call for us. <coughs> there's a call for us. He's called out. He said, not only was the Jews being called to the glory for the vessels of honor, but he brought us Gentiles. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for that. I don't know about you. Yeah, you, know, you know, we think about that, and you know, that's that's why we need to be so grateful for the Jews. Not, yes, not only because of the God's people, because if it wasn't for them rejected Christ, we'd still be lost. Yes, sir. If we should be out there in the world doing whatever God only knows, but have no promise, no salvation, we wouldn't have nothing. You know, we don't look at it that way. I'm thankful for the Jews. Amen. I'm thankful. I pray God gets them all in. Amen. Yes, sir. I've seen well, they're already they're, they're coming back to the homeland again. I've seen them uh, on TV there the other day or something. Uh, quite read it, that they're bringing them back in. Yes. Start to bring. I said, praise God, bring them in, Lord. Amen. Bring them in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's see. Where am I at here? And he also, he said also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which that's, that's actually Hosea. I don't know if y'all got the King James Word, if y'all got it. Hosea, you see what it is, that's actually Hosea. Is what it's supposed to be. So I will call them my people, which uh, were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. That's it. <coughs> and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, there that shall be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as to the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. And that's what oh, yeah. No matter how many millions and millions of people out there, there will be that remnant that, that will truly be saved. Yeah. Yeah. God, as uh, Pastor Tom read a while ago, God's calling out a remnant. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and, I, and I believe God is about ready to prepare all this thing, wrap this whole thing up. Oh, Amen. 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 Yes. Keep your eyes open. Yeah, I like what Pastor Chris there said Sunday morning. Don't be looking down. So how can you look down when you if you're looking down all the time you can't look up and lift up your head and see the redemption draw the knife. You know, people walk with their heads down and defeat all the time. No. Christian, we shouldn't live in defeat. No. I'm telling you. God God stirred in my heart that, that there's too many people, too many Christian God's people living in defeat too much. There's too many people that are living a defeated lives. Too many people that truly don't understand and know who they are in Christ. That's right? true. And I think that's what it boils down to. I, I'm, I'm going to share something that I'm going to share Sunday morning. I'm going to share just a little bit of it with y'all. Do y'all know that Satan is a chicken? No. Come on now. Think about this a minute. You look at David and Goliath. The Bible says the Philistines stood on one side and the uh, armies of Israel stood on the other side. What, 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 did, uh, what did Goliath do? I dare one of them to come out here. What do you think he's doing? He wants to fight that whole army. One person. Bring me one person. He wants to call you out by yourself so he can defeat you. He don't want to take on God's army. He wants to pull out one person so he can defeat him. You think about this. He told me, he said, if you have one person that will defeat me, he said, not this whole army. We'll, we'll, we'll do whatever you tell us to do. Y'all know that story? Is that not what he said? What did they do when he killed Goliath? They ran like a bunch of chickens. Come on now. Why? Because he said, if you resist the devil, you what? He's a chicken. See what the problem is, is we don't know who we are in Christ. When you start standing and knowing who you are in Christ, Satan can't stand up against you. Whosoever is born of God keeping himself in the weak can't get that. Come on, you need to start saying that's who we are. You know, we hear people all the time, well, man, I'm just I'm just bad at being that. Well, start saying what God says. Yes. Don't you know that life and death is in the power of the tongue? Yes, sir. You start proclaiming a 
promises of God, Satan has got to go. Amen. You know, you, you, you take the scripture. We, we hear this all the time. Amos 3 3. How do two walk together except they be agreed? Yes, you know what the very next verse says after that? Most people don't know. Will a lion roar if it has no prey? Satan is like a roaring lion. The reason he roars is because you agree with him. Come on now, somebody help me. That's the truth. We have promises that God has given us that we, I don't know if you've read or not, but we win. We need to start acting like winners. God wants you to win in every area of your life. He is the one that's formed you. And it wasn't by accident that He formed you who you are. Yes, sir. He put you here for a purpose in such a time as this. And it's time for us as God's people. I don't know how God off on this. Somebody needs to hear it. But we need to walk in victory. Amen. Amen. We need to start taking hold of what God has given us and start saying, Devil, you're learning. You need to get off my family. You need to leave my family alone. Leave my home alone. Leave my everything that looked like my life alone. You have no power. Scripture tells us that we, you know, we have the power to pull down that stronghold. Yes. That's right. You know what a stronghold is? Yeah. Stronghold is anything that you brought with you when you met Christ. Amen. Anything in your past, that's a stronghold that, that Satan's got to hold you, trying to hold yes. you back. Amen. We have the power through Christ to say to them. You ain't got no hold of me. Yep. He tells me to read long. I got Jesus with me. I've got my that's it. Army of the God That's it. Yeah. I tell people all the time. You hear people, and uh, Pastor Tom, I know you've heard. People stand up all the time, talk about that, uh, and give testimonies. Stand up, some man, and uh, y'all help me, man. All, all hell's been against me this week. Well, you still got two thirds for you. You only took a third of them. You're still on the winning side. <laughs> oh, you hear it all the time, but that's the mentality that we have. I mean, we got to feel hope. I call that a uh, pleasure moment here. Pleasure moment, yeah. That's, that's, that's a truth. What we need to do is realize the promises that we have in God and say this chick. Amen. We have y'all never heard that for me. No. No, we always think, we always give you too much credit. That's right. Traitors, he that's in you, he that's in the world. Amen. Say it, don't be afraid of you. Think about it. Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, who are you? That's right. Y'all know the story, the seven sons of Stephen, where they just trying to cast out their demons? Yeah. Uh, he, he didn't know. Yeah. See, when, when you know who you are, what Peter and John say when they come to the temple, look at me. What I have is what I'm going to give you. Peter say, well, that's right. No, it's not. It's to know who Jesus is. Amen. Know what you've got. Know who you are. Know that Peter was the same one that denied him. This same Peter is the one that said, hey, look at me. I know what I've got. Yeah. And it's not confidence. It's, it's, it's Savior confidence. Amen. 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 Know that he has already won the victory. Amen. 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 I'm going to throw this outside up too. Alright, well, I'm going to get in trouble back today for you. <laughs> but but I'm going to show you how, how people how people misunderstand scriptures. Okay? Malachi chapter 3. The time of scripture. Okay? It says, bring all your tithes to the storehouse that my house may be full. Alright? The verse, very verse right before that, they never say that. You know what it says? You are cursed with a curse. Then it goes on to say, he says, open up, he says that open up the wheel, that if you do it, he says that he'll open up the windows that, that, I have, that your house won't even contain. He says that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He's already rebuked him. Right. He put Satan to an open shame. Therefore, it's a done deal. Therefore, Satan has has to flee when we submit to God, saying, God, Lord, here I am. I, I'm all the all to you. You've got, you've got every bit of it. Satan, you have no power over me. Right. You've done been put to an open chain. And the cautious tells you he done put him to an open chain. Yes. It's for the whole world to see. Right. He has no power. And there's no way in this world that I can buy a blessing or buy more favor or buy more grace for God. Right. Can't do it. Right. You can't do it. That's good. They can't. Why? Because, you yeah, know, I, like, I like what Don said the other day. I, man, that, that stirred my heart. He was talking about. He said, "He said, you know, he said for years. He said, I told people you're either on a mountain or you're in a valley." He said, "The Holy Ghost kind of checked him on that the other day. He said you're in a deeper place. You're seated in heavenly places." Now hey. you think about that. Man, we, we, we've said that. That's a, that's a good cliche we've said for years. You're either on a mountain or in a valley. There you go. There you go. Put him where he belongs. Put him where he's belong. That's what the Bible tells us. He's under our feet. I don't know how I got off on that, but that means somebody didn't hear <laughs> Praise God, yeah. Jamie, you can rebuke me when you get back. <laughs> but that's all. Where are we at? 29. Let's see here. Oh, I'm way over from chapter 8. I'm going to go right. Ain't no wonder I went way off with it. 
Certainly there's a uh, number of children of Israel will be the number she said. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short walk will the Lord make upon the earth, which we know where he's talking about him coming back settled and everything. It says that and Elias said before, except the Lord of the Sabbath hath left us to see. We had been in Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. What's he say? What's he say? It's by heaven. If he left us that seed, or we'd be doomed for hell. That's what he's saying. He left, he left that seed. <clears throat> that not what that says? What is that seed? Jesus. Jesus. Right. And which, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. You know, you think about this whole, whole chapter so far. We went all the way down to verse 30. That's the first time faith has been mentioned. You notice that? Mm -hmm. See, what he's talking about, this whole thing with Israel, is, is because they, they didn't have faith. The gospel was preached to them just like it was to us, but it wasn't mixed with faith. We as Gentiles, we had we you know we came in the same way that everybody else has to. You got to come in by faith. So, but the Israel which followed after the law of righteousness had not attained the law of righteousness, which we know that through the law that nobody's righteous. You know, there's no way that anybody would become righteous through the law. It says, Wherefore, well, man, I'm not finished on it. We're getting get about pretty close. <clears throat> Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. But they stumbled stumbled at the stumbling stone, which we know is Christ. Yes. They stumbled at it. Amen? Amen. As it is written, Behold, I lay in sign the stumbling block and the rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. All goes down to Jesus, eh? Amen. All goes down to Jesus. He's the one, he's the stumbling block, and he's the one that we all got to come in by. Amen. All right. Right. Well, we're about ten minutes early. That's all right. Yeah. We'll let y'all stretch a little bit. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Somebody didn't get too much trouble.